Okay, so I'm going to select one paper. Maybe I'll do that face by Dr. Suryana. Okay, so we have this. Um, okay, we can see here um, characterization. Okay, once we have got the pure protein, okay, pure protein meaning that you have got one single band, I mean pure band, okay, pure protein meaning that if you have this, your SDS page gel, I mean your gel, you can see that from the gel, after how many steps and everything, by the end of the day, you have got only one band. Okay, there is no other bands. So I would say this protein is pure. So now it is a pure protein. Right here, this is a pure protein. Pure protein or enzyme. Pure protein or pure enzyme. Okay, now we have got the pure protein or pure enzyme. Um, mean that there's no other interfere i mean this protein is only one band it will not interact with other protein i mean other things like all this salt most probably all the salt um unnecessarily salt has been removed and then all the metabolites all the nucleic acid all the other things um it is not there they are not there so it's time for you to characterize why it is important to characterize the protein? Um, we need to characterize the protein because um, we want to know how what is the pattern or the or the bio biochemical features of this protein. Okay, for example, um, we have this protein. For our case, we have that lipase. Okay, so we want to know. Uh, what is the optimal temperature for this enzyme to react? I know that last time you have done the assay at um, 70 degree or 65 degree, I can't remember. Or is it 60? Uh, anyways, do you, do you still remember your practical? Um, what is the temperature? Let's um, check here. What is the temperature for your lipid assay in the in the practical last time, if I'm not mistaken, it's 65, right? Okay, so now we want to check either it is at 65 or not. So we can do the um, characterization. Okay, um, we, we can check on it. So we want to assay, we will do the assay at different temperatures so that we will get all the best shape. So most of the time, Okay, when we do the factorization, we want to have this shape, like a bell shape. Okay, meaning that where will be the optimal um, activity, I mean optimal condition. Okay, so our graph, it will, uh, the x axis, it will be the um, properties, I mean the properties I would say uh, the characteristic the characteristic the characteristic okay and then the y axis it will be the um, activity okay but normally the activity here we express it in uh, relative activity relative act Okay, so we will express the activity here in terms of the relative activity. What is relative activity? Okay, this is example. Okay, for example, if we have your group, I mean, I mean one group, you have your um, highest, the highest activity um, is 10 unit. Okay, 20 units. Maybe, okay, make it at this. Um, what kind of case? If 10 
unit per meal. Okay. Okay. If the 10 unit per meal, 10 unit per meal is the highest, or, or, or I mean the, the control. Control meaning that the, the in the characterization, which part represents your control? Okay. Normally, we use the highest activity. Okay. The highest activity here represents the, the, the thing that we want to compare with. Okay. So, if this position is 10 unit, and then this one will be considered as 100%. Okay. So, if this position here is just uh, having 1.5 unit per minute when you do the um, essay. So, meaning that what will be the relative activity for this? Okay, it will be 1.5 divided by 10 multiply by 100. So you will get how many percent in this position? If here is 100 unit, 100 but 100 percent, this side will be okay. Yeah. Thank you, Danu, Shazwani, whoever responded really quickly. Thank you. Okay. So you have here 15 percent because uh it's just like 1.5. So normally we, we express this relative, uh, I mean, activity in terms of the relative activity. I mean, the characterization based on the relative activity. Okay, so let's just uh, check on this paper. So same goes, if you have here, the characteristic here, it could be temperature. Um, it could be about uh, temperature. Oops. Um, You can check on the uh, optimal temperature. Okay, you can check on the pH. Okay, okay, you can check on the substrate specificity. Okay, I mean, this part, it can be anything. It can be about effect of pH, effect of substrate, effect of temperature, effect of the enzyme concentration. Okay, if you still remember that you have done this role play with Dr. Sherry last semester, okay, long time ago, okay, enzyme concentration, you can do the substrate concentration, okay, what else for the, for the characterization? Okay, you can do the, uh, this is straight, you can have the effect of the inhibitor. Okay, you have the inhibitor. If you're not sure what kind of inhibitor you are working on, this is based on the graph. How does the graph looks like? It's depend. Okay, if you have the competitive inhibitor, the graph should be like this. Non-competitive will be like this. Uncompetitive, it is like this. Okay. Okay, so you can check what kind of inhibitors you have based on the graph. Rate. Okay, so now the characteristic is very subjective, depends on the whatever parameter you have put in. Okay, so we will go for this paper. So this paper, um, this paper discuss about The lipase, add to lipase, and then you want to know what is calcium activated thermostable lipase. Mm, but it's okay, let's just have a look at it. What is it? So I'm going to make it bigger. Um, okay, so we have this. So we have here calcium activated and then um, 
just by looking at the I mean abstract itself you can see that okay the yeah, thermostable light paste okay once thermostable light paste the range for thermostable enzyme is within what okay so and then we have the um the source of the organism okay the, the source of the light paste it is from thermophilic bacillus species strain l2 okay this is the source Okay, the source, the source of the enzyme. Okay. okay, and then after that, produce the most stable page. Okay, was isolated, including was cloned. Okay, this is involved cloning. This involved cloning. Okay, clone into Pichia pastoris vector. So meaning that it's involved cloning, like the one that we have discussed about cloning just now. Under the control of this promoter, okay, we have this promoter for the induction for E. coli just now. We discussed about uh, IPTG was used to induce the, I mean, to induce the expression, I mean, to regulate the expression. Once the uh, inducer um, is um, supplied to the structure, that means the transcript, the promoter will start doing the transcription okay the promoter will start to initiate the transcription so that we can have the mrna okay so for this case we have used alcohol of this promoter which is methanol inducible alcohol of this promoter so that means the promoter here is alcohol oxidase and then it used methanol as the inducer okay so and then achieve in shape class okay, this is the activity unit per minute now it makes sense to you activity for l2 lipase in pkr pastoris using this promoter is 125 unit per minute and then the size is not sounds alien to you anymore it has the size with 44.5 kilo delta and then the fold is also mentioned here the fold of purification the purification fold purification fold the one that we discussed just now is about uh, the specific activity of the step divided by the initial i mean the crude one okay and then after that what what is the method used okay this group of um researchers they use affinity chromatography okay we have learned about chromatography chromatography and then what is the yield yield is the recovery just now right the recovery the total activity the final one okay if we started with 100 percent and then by the end of the day how many percent uh, that we get okay so for this case they have 63.2 Two percent yield, okay. And then they also mentioned about the specific activity. Now the specific activity is four hundred and fifty-eight unit per milligram. Every one milligram, it will have four hundred and fifty-eight. Okay. So you have your feeling now. If you compare this to the, uh, okay. If you compare this with this just now, wow, this is so, I mean, the specific activity now is 15,000. This is so, I mean, wow, impressive. It's a lot of the protein left after this, okay? But uh, for this paper, the final one they managed to get is only 458. Okay, you cannot just rely on one. That means you need to keep reading and then to find what is the normal, normal um, recovery that people report on the target protein that you are working on. It is not like, I don't care. I want to make it, I want to find it to be uh, 2,000 or 15,000 or something. It depends on the protein and then depends on the assay method. We don't know what kind of protein they are working on the 15,000 just now. Okay. 
So, um, do we know the total activity here? If we have the purification table based on this information? Okay, logically. Okay, we stop for the question. Do you, do you know where, what is the... Based on this abstract, do you know what is the... I mean, the, at least the total activity? Do you know what is the total activity for this? Just put it there in the chat room. Do you know or not? The total activity. Anyone? Based on this abstract, do you know what will be the total activity? Okay, no response. I don't know what are you doing. Okay. So basically, based on this, we do not know the total activity because even the total activity of the crude, because they in the abstract they do not mention about the volume of the sample of the sample that they prepare the crude. Okay, they don't know it. Okay, even in here they say after optimization, the recombinant achieved in shape plus was 125 unit per mil. They are not purifying only one male. They must be, I mean, one culture. Nobody's, I think, growing one male, okay, for purification. You need to have more, okay. So, for this case, they're not using one male. So, let's just check on the result, what they have. Okay, what else do we have here? So, we go for the second part here. Um, the purification done. What being reported here? The characterization section, okay, it, its activity was maximum, okay, it has the optimal activity at 75, at 70 degrees, as meaning that the characteristic here, um, this enzyme is uh, given its optimal activity if we perform the assay at 70 degree with pH 8. Okay, it needs a uh, temperature 70 degree and incubation in the buff. I mean, the buffer used to prepare the sample should be in pH 8. Okay, so the lipase activity increase. Okay, here effect of the metal ion. Okay, it shows here five fold increase in the presence of calcium. That means when it, it's a, when the um the lipase uh, is supplemented with the calcium ion, okay, either from the calcium chloride or any calcium, it gives five fold of activity. Okay, without the calcium, for example, without calcium, it's just five unit without calcium, five unit per mil. But when it puts calcium, it becomes thirty five. Unit per min. So, meaning that this enzyme, I mean this F2 lipase, is activated by calcium. If we have calcium to this, then it will perform the catalysis optimally, I mean efficiently with the presence of calcium. Okay. And then also it has the medium to long chain triglycerol. Okay. So it prefer 10 to 16 uh, carbon of the fatty acid, okay, triglyceride, right? And then uh, it has, okay, for example, for the natural oil, um, in corn oil, olive oil, soybean, and palm oil, this oil, they have different carbon uh, chain. And then this result, I mean, this enzyme uh, can react within this six, I mean, carbon, uh, carbon 10 to carbon 16. Okay, you can check each of this oil, what is the majority of the carbon in this respective oil. For example, in corn oil. Corn oil rich in which carbon? Carbon, carbon 11, carbon 12, or what? Olive oil, we know olive oil, C18, olive acid. Okay, so soybean, what is the carbon for soybean? Palm oil, what? Okay, so you need to check on this. Um, 
so that we know that okay which of these having the highest activity which i, I mean for the cup um for the l2 like this okay in terms of the stabilization high temperature okay it is stable at high temperature and alkaline ph and then um it's as it's brought substrate specificity okay because this you see numbers of oil natural oil can be used it offer great potential for application in various industries okay so any industries which require high temperature this alkalinase is preferable that's why we need to perform characterization that's why the characterization is important okay without the characterization without the characteristic without knowing the characteristic of the enzyme we don't know what kind of the application suitable for this enzyme okay so we need to know all of this okay so far any question before we go for the graph each of this if you have any question you can just shout out with the microphone or you can even type um okay no from any others still okay right am i too fast okay so we we don't want to know how to how the protein i mean the um i mean the l2 life phase is produced we just want to know how it is purified okay the cloning process and everything we don't we don't have to discuss here okay but the thing is we want to know the method just to purify okay we can see here um, it used okay the keyword here polyhistidine tag Okay, the meaning that it use histidine as a tag. Okay, and then purify using IMAC. Okay, immobilize um, metal affinity chromatography, I think. Okay, so on nickel. So the immobilized metal is the nickel sapphiros. Okay, nickel sapphiros six fast flow column. Okay, this is the column they use. Nickel Sapphiros, next fast flow column from Anusha. Okay, the column was equilibrated with sodium phosphate. So this is the normal, quite um, common for the affinity I make. We use this 20 millimolar sodium phosphate, pH 7.4. They are range of the affinity, uh, range of pH which can be used for the affinity chromatography. Okay, but normally we start with the 7.4, you can go up to 7.5, 7.6 or something sometimes. You can keep reading depending on the protein, depending on your uh, metric too. Okay, it is not necessarily 7.4, but you can always adjust this. But you cannot go up to suddenly 6 or 8 something, so that's not, not for this uh, column, okay? So you have this 20 millimolar. And then after that, uh, in this 50 millimolar of sodium phosphate, and it has uh, 0 0.5 molar sodium chloride and 20 millimolar of the imidazole. Okay, inside the equilibration buffer, um, it has some imidazole. Okay, some uh, equilibration buffer they do not require any imidazole. Some require 10 millimolar imidazole just to facilitate or make the protein become more specific to the binding. So this part also can be optimized if the purification doesn't look good for you. Okay, so then after that, what's next? 25 milliliter of the filtered supernatant were loaded, meaning that they use 25 mil. Okay, here they use. 25 ml of the uh, crude protein. Okay. So it has uh, 25 ml wash, okay, loaded to the um, column and then um, 
the column was washed. I mean, remember we have the washing step. Okay, similar buffer they use. 25 millimolar, sodium phosphate in midazole, sodium chloride. Okay, and then illusion here. Okay, eluted with linear gradient of imidazole. I mean, remember you have the graph, uh, if you have the slot here, and then after that, you can see there is a imidazole, salt concentration, imidazole concentration here. So this is without the less concentration of the imidazole, for example, if it is 20 millimolar, and then after that, you can start to um, differentiate the salt. Okay, do not confuse this with the other lane. Okay, this is the purification. Okay. okay, this is the crude, I mean the protein, but this is the lane for the uh, salt. Okay, so from here, um, we have the fraction was subjected to, okay, each fraction, meaning that each fraction here, okay, each fraction here, um all the collected fraction here they are all subjected to 280 reading and lipase acid meaning that starting from the beginning towards the end the the tubes they are all being um uh, assay okay um with they perform assay the lipase assay and then they read all this 280 absorbent okay the active fraction meaning that from this, 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 if these two are active fraction, meaning that these two having the language activity, they will be pulled together, I mean combined together. Okay, so after that, um, okay, dialyze. Okay. For example, if the salt here, I mean the salt, I mean the immediate concentration to elude this is about, um, um, 250 millimolar imidazole. Okay, because you see imidazole here stand at 0 to 500. But if there's nothing coming up during 0, but something coming up when the concentration of imidazole around 250 millimolar, okay, this is quite high. And then the, the author choose here, they will dialyze. Meaning that the pool fraction here, if we have the pool fraction here, um, this is 2 mil, and then another here 2 mil, total this will be 4 mil. Okay, this 4 mil will undergo the dialysis. The one that I told you, we have the buffer here, we have the buffer inside this, and then we have the tube, like the snake skin tube, the whisking tube. Um, yeah, the tip like this, the one that with the ice cream. Yeah, we put it the four mil here. The four mil, um, the four mil purified protein will be here because this four mil is having 250 millimolar of imidazole. So, this four mil will perform this, they perform this dialysis just to remove this 250 millimolar. And then what will be the buffer for dialysis here? Okay, they use 20 millimolar of the sodium phosphate pH 7. Okay, the buffer for dialysis is sodium phosphate. Okay. Oops. Okay, the the, the uh, Sorry. Use here sodium phosphate. Okay, pH 7.4 because they don't want to change the pH because the activity here check based on this pH. We don't want to suddenly change the pH because it will give different structure for the uh, enzyme if we change the pH. Okay, but we remove the salt. Okay, so that the the the, the characterization will not be interfered by the salt. Okay, so uh, by the end of the day, the the purified protein now is in the um 
sodium phosphate pH 7.4 buffer is it will the, the 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 salt will no longer be inside the tube okay so the the purified protein um they put it one meal okay um yeah they just this is just a liquid they don't want to be they don't want to have four meal one shot they put it one meal, one meal, one meal. Just, just did a matter of keeping it. But we don't have to keep this if we want to proceed for the characterization. So, um, done with this. Okay, lipase assay similar to what we have done. Okay. And then protein assay also similar. Um, SDS also same. Okay, stain with a similar buffer, I mean, um, stainer for massive brilliant blue art and then now we go for the characterization okay so if you use gel um, for this case they use gel filtration uh, to know the size of this okay and then after that you perform this endo deglycosylation okay effect of pH Okay, um, I mean, this is the size determination and then the glycosylation. This glycosylation meaning that we want to remove the, the, what we call it, the, the glucose. Okay, any glycosylation happen. Okay, we will remove by using this endoglycosylation. Okay, uh, and then now, the characterization start with the effect of pH, effect of the temperature, and the stability. Okay, in each, in each of the pH and the temperature. So, for this, uh, we will discuss about this later. Um, and then after that, effect of metal ion. Okay, so also there is metal ion. Substrate specificity, positional specificity, and then what else? Um, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, this is the result. Okay. So as for the result, you can see here for this case they use um, I mean the okay we go for the purification table first. Just want to see how okay so this is the purification table so you can see here they started with 25 uh, mil and then they end up having 20 mil so from this 25 mil initial culture okay you still remember the, the technique from the beginning they use 25 mil so the crew, they applied 25 mil of the culture. So the total activity, we don't want to repeat this. How do they get this total activity of the protein? We have done just now. And then specific activity also being calculated, recovery and the full. Okay, done. And then after one step of the purification, they managed to get active fraction about 20 mil. Meaning that if we have 2 mil each, 2 mil, for, for each fraction, maybe they have got here about 10, right? 2 multiplied by 10. That's why they get 20 mil. I mean, 10 at the fraction, but I don't think they collect 2 mil. Maybe they have collected 4 mil per fraction. Okay, maybe they have collected 4 mil. Okay, if they have collected 4 mil per fraction, meaning that this one they have only five they have only five tubes i mean five active fraction okay five active fraction that's why they got 20 mil okay so 20 mil total activity being calculated activity specific activity recovery and one fold okay my question is if you have like um 100 
meat of the culture and we want to purify. Should we use only 25 min or should we use all these 100 min? What do you think? Okay, if we have 100 min, should we use all these two 100 min or should we just use 25 min? Yeah, okay. Basically, it depends on um, what you want. Okay, you are doing only a small scale. Now you can, if you want to use, it doesn't, it, it, I, I mean, 25 mil is quite a lot, but you can even use only 5 mil. It's up to you. Okay, if you are growing even 1,000 mil, but if you are in the process of optimization, Optimization meaning that you just want to know what will be the best technique for you, what will be the best uh, condition for purification. Maybe you don't want to waste your time and resources a lot by purifying one liter. This is one liter culture. This is a lot. You will only, I mean, make it a lot, um, multiply the, 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 the the volume once you have um, confirmed okay that's the volume that you want that's the um, technique that you want meaning that you know the concentration of the imidazole you want to use you know how to to maintain the flow rate i mean you you have fixed all of them then you can um increase vo the volume okay so for now because this one is only 25 minutes, you want to try with 25 minutes, that's okay, just try with the 25 minutes, that's okay. Okay. So, if you have 25 mil, and then load it, finally you get one full. After that, by the end of the purification, you get 25 mil. Can you calculate if you have one liter culture? If you have one liter culture, do you think how much uh, the active fraction will you get? Okay, I repeat. If you have one liter culture, how much active fraction, I mean, after the purification step, after nickel separo step, how much will be uh, the, the active fraction will you get if you have but one liter culture. Now you have 25, you get 20. If you have one liter, okay. Okay, um, if you have 25 mil uh, crude, you get the active fraction 25, uh, 20 mil. Okay, if you start with 25, you get the active fraction here, 20 mil. But if you have, now you want to increase the volume. You, if you have this one liter, if you have this one liter, what will be the active volume? I mean this, what will be the uh, result if you have the new prevention table here? If you have used here, one liter, what will be here? What mean? Okay, what mean? What is the mean here? Okay. So it will be 800 mean because you can calculate. But if you can, if you just want to use 10, do you know what will be here? If you use 10 here, it will be here? 8, yeah, it will be 8 mil. Okay, you can maintain this. If you can maintain this, 
That means you 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 have established. You have something. Um, I would say reproducible, reproducible result of purification. I mean, your purification technique now is um can be reproduced and you can get similar result if you repeat all this process. Okay. So today you want to use twenty five mil, then you get twenty. Maybe next week you know your you have established your things here. You want to know two liter culture. Yeah, that's okay. If you have two liter, yeah, they will be different. Okay, so this is roughly about the purification, and then I think this is the best they can get. Okay, so that's why, um, and then it is acceptable. Why? Because from this, um. From this, um, what we call it, the um, SDS page, it is shows one band. Okay, you can see here, active fraction here, one band. Okay, light paste and to purify using affinity chromatography. Lane one, can you explain lane one? This is extra cellular crude enzyme. Lane one. Can you see something or almost nothing here? Then one. And then why? Can you explain that? Why? This is really not a good square for me. Um, okay. This one. What do you think about lane one? Lane 1. Lane 1 represents the crude enzyme. Can you interpret a little bit? What do you think about this? Um, you can talk if you want. You can type if you are really shy to talk. Because this is the lane 1 represent the crude. And then after that, you can see this is lane 2 for the flow through. Lane 2 for the flow through. Lane 3 for washing step. Lane 4 to lane 9. They are all the um, illusion. Okay. Lane 3. Okay, I will label this. This is. This is crude, okay, and then flow through, washing, and then dilution. Okay, illusion one. Okay, yeah, illusion one, and then maybe E2 here, E3. E4, E5, E6. Okay, so you see, it, it looks like nothing here. Why suddenly they got something here at the back? All of this, um, all the samples for each well, um, they use. 15 min for each lane for each well they use 15 microlit and it's 15 microlit so what do you think about this group is there something there or there's nothing there are you still in there guys can you see the participants Not sure, nothing in the crude, not sure. Not sure meaning that you're not sure either it is there or not. If there's any crude or not. But it is labeled as crude, so that means it is a crude. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, this is extra cellular. You cannot compare with yours last time. 
when it is extracellular, that means the protein, I mean, if this is the cell, um, if this is the cell, okay, we have the, uh, and the genomic there, and then we have the protein here. Um, and then we have the other impurities in there, other things inside. So once it is called extra solution, um, anyone want to say something? Because I'm still sharing, you can just shut up. Because I, I can't hear you if you don't say anything. Okay, so if you have this um, cell, okay, when it says extracellular, meaning that this protein, I mean the target enzyme, if the target enzyme is represented by the green color, meaning that this green color, once it is expressed, it will be released in the culture. Okay? There are also some will be left inside sometimes, but majority, it will be directed to the culture medium. And then a cell grows, and then the cells also die, and the, 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 the membrane will also burst. It will also release a little bit of the impurities compared to the living cell, the impurities um, just stay in the cell. Only some cell which maybe they just burst and then break and then you can see some of the impurities outside. So meaning that here, the target protein is already outside of the cell. It is not within the cell. We don't have to break the cell. Because when we say here extracellular crude enzyme, meaning that the crude is already outside of the cell. The sonication process is not happening. The breaking process is not happening. So whatever growing in the culture, you just need to separate cell from the culture, cell from the medium. Okay, by the end of the day, you will get only the medium. So inside the medium is basically your target protein. Okay? So the process of to break the cell is not going to happen. For this case, what you can say here, the target protein, if you have, okay, we go for like this last time, 4,001 protein. Okay? But remember the cell, some of them will be released outside the cell. Okay, maybe the number of protein released outside of the cell is just. Oops, um, I don't want to use the same color. 